So the film is um, about a, a heartbroken, uh, brain damaged character who is being interrogated for finding a woman who is against the law of the Nazi occupation. So um, technically it's a love story and through the course of the interview the character uh, finds about things which he did not really know which changes his entire idea or the entire lie which he was living it for the past 25 years. Well so in, in, in one sentence I would say that um, it's, the, it's the cost of remembering worth the price you pay for it. I don't know what time code that would be, but that would be the first flashback of where you witness the the rape incident, and but you do not witness it, but you see it through the other characters. So the idea behind uh, sh when I was working on this film, I did not really want to explicitly show the rape because when there have been so many films made about the second world war and somehow when you um it's like when you see a situation when when you see a situation around the second world war you somehow automatically uh understand about what the victim went through so i wanted to leave it to the audience's uh, perspective and the audience's uh, imagination and try to focus on other people who were around which are uh, not involved in the in the in the rape but they are still quite involved as spectators and that speaks about the ideology I, I wanted to be really intimate to the action without even showing the action so i thought of starting with a parallel patient who is witnessing the action and slowly graduating to what he is doing with where he was masturbating to this situation so yeah the idea was to keep it in blur and the other problem i had because i was shooting this film on black and white film so and this film talks about two different times one is 1965 and one is 1941 so to make the division between 1965 and 19 because usually the conventional way of showing a flashback is that the flashback is black and white but here i had both the situations which were in black and white so i chose to expose the stock differently and i pushed the stock a bit more to have more grains and more uh, contrast in the flashback part eh, l'idea del bianco e nero è perché la storia comunque è legata ad una vicenda realmente accaduta, anzi anche una sorta di eroina, no? questa infermiera, c'è cioè anche una targa in suo onore. Quindi perché del, del bianco e nero? Proprio perché era una pagina quasi di documentario? There were a couple of reasons. One of the reasons was, uh, firstly, whenever we look at the earlier 19th century, uh, except for paintings, but most of the documented footage or the films that you have are black and white. So whenever people watch uh, a film which is in black and white, it somehow takes you back in that time and they understand that this has to be... So that was the larger perspective for every audience. And the personally, uh, the one of the technical parameters for shooting this exercise was to shoot on black and white film. So this is how these things are interlinked. And uh, it also helped me because once, once I shoot in black and white, I'm limited, I'm, I'm more attracted to the emotions because it, I only have the light to play with and there are not many colors to distract me or help me to express that emotion. And somehow, because I was not trying to give a proper judgment, things were not really black and white. I'm not saying that the nurse, what she did was good or bad. I'm not trying to pass that judgment, so I thought perhaps choosing a limited uh, visual expression would somehow help it. L'ultima cosa, eh, la scuola frequentata eh, in Cecoslovacchia è molto prestigiosa. Eh, cosa sente appunto di avere imparato all'interno di questa scuola? Perché, se vuole raccontarcelo, la scelta, visto che comunque ha una, una storia, diciamo così, eh, cosmopolita, no? I've always been a nomad, unfortunately, not by choice, uh, where I was moving between countries. I started from Libya and then I moved to India for my higher education. And then I started working in the Indian film industry. But while I was growing up and I was getting influenced by cinema, European cinema and all the film movements we started in Europe were one of my one of the main reasons why I got interested in cinema. I was really influenced by Italian New Realism to start with and uh, all the social realist cinema which followed after that. So the, I thought perhaps going to a European film school would actually uh, introduce me to working on set and introduce me to work in narratives which I admire. 
and uh, this is and FAMU was one of the schools which was known for its uh, cinematography be besides woods in Poland and uh, it also was English friendly that's what it mentioned so that was one of the reasons why I chose FAMU um, yeah but honestly about Czechoslovakia I did not really know much before actually getting into Czechoslovakia.